It's 420 somewhere, and right now that somewhere is right here. Hi, I'm Janae Burris. And I'm Jake Brown. Welcome to the Cannabis Show, where we talk all things weed. Another week in the books, another weed in the books. Janae, how was it hanging out with The Bachelor? The bachelor. old Bachelor? The old Bachelor? I, I mean, still young, but not current I Bachelor. What's He's still single. It was great. It He's was great. He's still single? He's a nice guy. Uh, we're, we're making him into a better man. But the, through stand-up comedy? Through stand-up comedy. That's what all men need. In the we're, we're keeping him humble, though. We're okay. like, <laughs> Wait, so you were tasked with helping him create five minutes of stand-up comedy. Yeah, five minutes of stand-up comedy, which he did do some work. He is funny already. Well, TV what? host funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my kind of funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he he was fun to work with. The crew was fun to work with. It was it was. They gave us a a big chance to uh, talk about what we do. They okay. were just kind of like, so what do you do? What do women do in comedy? Tell us about women. So th just kind of through the, um, they use him as a premise, but it was like, let's talk about women in comedy too. And the whole point of having him learn comedy is to be better for women. So we're like, okay. Wait, so is this like a pickup artist kind of thing? Maybe. Like, did you teach him how well, they're to? They're teaching him, uh, he's on his way to learn salsa. He's going to do some stunt acting Is and he stuff. like the like $6 million man they're for ABC now? They're going to make him into the man that we were promised <laughs> when we watched TV in the 80s. You know, He's going to be much better after. But he was cool. It was, it was a real fun experience. Well, everything I saw in promo leading up to it was that he was notoriously unfunny. He said that. He came in with that kind of being like, everybody says I'm oh, unfunny. Sure. Everybody says I'm vanilla. Blah, blah, blah. And he, when he made this joke, I was like, yeah. Did he smoke weed? No, he's like... He's... <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know what? I actually didn't talk to him about weed because he kind of talked about... Christianity a bit, and it, I feel like for his image, he couldn't even say if he smoked weed. Okay, okay it's an, oh, image is important. You He's should, missing out on another sector of the dating. Uh, there, you know? we should do our own bachelor. Okay, we want to do. So we'll have a bachelor who maybe smokes marijuana. The bongshuler. <laughs> oh, no, God. don't stop. <laughs> the bongshuler. <laughs> that rolls then he, right off the top. He competes for the love of like twenty six female comics, though. So we're all <laughs> battling each other, trying to be funny, being real assholes. Uh, and he has to pick one at the end. I'm watching. And share his insurance with us. <laughs> oh <God. I laughs> Would you for that? That could be you. Wait, no, yeah, tell my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> and get me insurance. If she's a good producer and manager. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. How's your insurance? What's, what's up with you? I just got back from California. We had an amazing... Oh. I got Is that the, where the cough comes from? Yeah, spread. exactly. The good old California cough. No, uh, I had... We, in L.A., had an eight-course dinner, which was like four more courses than I had ever mm. had in a meal. Mm, um, and we did pairings with, with dabs. So every course came with some dabs. Uh, thanks to friend of the show and cannabis contributor, Rye Pritchard. He hooked uh -huh. it up. Um, and so it was like, it's, it's like wine. When you eat, or eat food with certain wines, it just makes everything taste better. It was like getting your mouth high. <laughs> like, okay, a little bit of terps, and then you try a bite of like this beef bourguignon, and it tasted really great. Nice. Also, my trick to pronouncing anything French is just like, do I have gum in my well, mouth? Well, All right, well, 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 well. That was that sounds so fun. It was really nice, and then we spent Sunday morning on a farm with a hundred-pound pig and had a brunch wine. So it was a big wine-filled, weed-filled weekend. You're living the life. You're living some weird imaginary life. <laughs> it's. I got some good news. Uh, some strains to review too. Oh, okay. Some sherbet or sherbet. It depends on it. what do you say? Sherbet. Sherbet. Hard R. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, are you interested in hearing my review? Because it's coming soon. I hope. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. I'll wait for that. I look forward to that. All right. Well, now it's time for the week in weed. As Red Man famously theorized in the 2001 film How High, if you study high, take the test high, you get high scores. Everyone knows that. <laughs> uh, it didn't work for me in my five years of school. But now, instead of getting your degree on weed, you can get one in weed. Oh. As Northern Michigan University announced a four-year degree on all things cannabis cultivation. Now, in the past, we've covered schools like Delaware Valley University offering basic classes like Hydro. Uh, we've covered UC Davis's physiology course, but NMU offers the whole enchilada, a legit degree that covers everything from cultivation to extraction. Now, even with medical marijuana legal in the state, students won't be replacing homeroom with a grow room anytime soon, but instead of studying uh, other plants with medicinal properties. 
While the science and chemistry of cannabis will be at the forefront of the degree, there will also be courses that focus on legal and economic issues throughout the industry. Janae, I think it's time for us to start workshopping our college tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into that. Let's do it for sure. Uh, I right. want to real bad. Okay. College, that, college money, that, that college money, that college money is where that it's college at. money is real, okay? And we're respond. we can we talk go, to you. We take the show to colleges, we do a little stand-up, we do some... You do a little stand-up, <laughs> I'm like, just wait for Janae Burris. I She's think that be sounds amazing. like a great holiday party for people to plan and invite us. And we bring us. the bachelor? <laughs> we bring the bachelor, he does a hot five, and... <laughs> I, this sounds like a show, I'd be into this. Come in. All right. Uh, California prepares to bring recreational marijuana to its people. Los Angeles leaders are crafting regulations to permit a range of marijuana businesses, and they want to make sure that communities most disproportionately affected by the war on drugs get their slice of the pie. I hope that made sense. Uh, you may have heard that the communities most damaged by this plague uh, set by the Reagan administration happen to be black and Latino communities. Uh, you may have heard that. The war on drugs put many parents and their children behind bars for nonviolent drug offenses. Uh, families were crippled by financial burdens due to legal fees and loss of employment. Children were left parentless and put into the system uh, because of this war on drugs. You know, the majority of those people were black and Latino. Under California law, uh, local government cannot offer preferential treatment based on race or ethnicity. Instead, programs would benefit financially disadvantaged people convicted of marijuana crimes in California, their family members, uh, and people with low incomes who lived in the neighborhoods most affected by marijuana arrests, you know, black and Latino people. So uh, co-founder of the California Minority Alliance, Donnie Anderson, says it's not about race. This is about communities that were hurt by the failed war on drugs. So black and Latino people? <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I'm playing a little coy here. Uh, but I totally understand, you know, what you're saying, Mr. Anderson. The city will provide different levels of assistance under the proposed social equity program with poor people convicted of marijuana crimes receiving the maximum assistance. The program looks really promising, and you can check out the full story written by Emily Alpert Reyes of LA Times in the Cannabis US News section. But some of the highlights, in my opinion, of uh, these are proposals that will assist people in the program in applying for licenses and helping yes. them to find vacant properties. Yes. Yep, for every general applicant who receives licensing, the city will give a license to someone in the program, an effort the city refers to as equitable participation. I really like that. Uh, city council vetting of the proposed regulations, which were drafted by city staff members and consulting firm Amic Foster Wheeler, will happen later this month. Jake. All right, now to Maine, where one of America's most outrageous governors now holds the fate of the state's recreational marijuana laws in his hands. That's Governor Paula Page, who advocated bringing back the guillotine in 2016, accused a state senator of giving it to the people without, quote, providing Vaseline, and said that oh. a typical drug dealer what? from surrounding states would, quote, impregnate a young white girl, unquote, half the time. Kudos, Governor LePage. You've managed to make Donald Trump look like... Okay, well, he's still Donald Trump. Let's not go overboard. Uh. But <laughs> with Maine's legislature failing to get enough votes to override his veto after a special session, the reworked bill heads to his desk after LePage proposed delaying sales until 2019 to give them a little bit more time to get the laws in order. But credit to the Portland Press-Herald's editorial board for calling LePage's proposal what it was, quote, nothing more than an attempt to subvert the will of the voters and stop the initiative the governor disagrees with, unquote. Now, at the time of this taping, we don't know if the bill, which added a 10% excise tax uh, while banning weed drive throughs boo, uh, will be signed <laughs> off on. Godspeed, Maine, and protect your necks. Janae? Actor, musician, and former Hollywood teen heartthrob Corey Feldman, star of Stand By Me, The Lost Boys, and license to drive, not to be confused with Corey Hames, former Hollywood teen heartthrob who also starred in License to Drive and The Lost Boys, but is now deceased, R.I.P. Corey Hames. Uh, I learned a lot from the movie Lucas, okay? Uh, Feldman is claiming to be the victim of a good old-fashioned shakedown after he and bandmates were found in possession of marijuana while traveling in Louisiana. I sure hope Corey, star of Bad News Bears, Gremlins, and The Burbs, didn't smuggle that out of Colorado. You know, he was just in town playing the Oriental Theater with mm -hmm. his band. Uh, we don't condone that, 
Okay, we don't condone that shit, man. Uh, <laughs> come here, partake in the finest cannabis products Colorado has to offer. Dine on our fine green chili. <laughs> Enjoy the slopes and hot springs. You may leave with great memories, but you'll need to leave the weed here, friend. Uh, Magum, what is that? Mangum, Louisiana police pulled over uh, the Corey Feldman and the Angels tour bus for speeding. They took the lead singer who starred in Goonies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and She's Too Tall to the police station for a suspended license and then discovered <laughs> marijuana on the RV. Police say Feldman, star of Friday the 13th, Final <laughs> Chapter, fi Friday the 13th, New Beginnings, and Polly Shore is Dead, was charged with the misdemeanor and released after paying a fine. But a series of tweets from Feldman, star of Bordello of <laughs> 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 Rock and Roll High School Forever, and Michael Jackson's Liberian girl say that he was not arrested or put into jail. The marijuana was not his, but belonged to a crew member who had a medical marijuana license. Okay, that's probably real. And that the band was asked to take photos and sign autographs after paying police in cash. With over 100 movies and TV appearances, I wouldn't doubt it, Corey. Okay. Do you know what I just Ooh. realized is that outside of Stand By Me, I've never seen a Corey Feldman movie. <laughs> He was so good, for real though. He was so good. I totally agree. I got to the end of the article. I was like, yeah, they probably did do that. Because oh, yeah. he's kind of popular. He's he, his face kind of still looks the same. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. I mean he suffered from that's medical marijuana, I'm sure. Way. It's just it it lifts it's and, his, it lifts, it lifts, it lifts and, and tones. <laughs> no, it's pretty much he was driving with a suspended license, though. That's kind of dumb. Wait, he was driving his own tour bus? Yeah. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Make one of the angels do also, that. Also, tour sometimes. bus is probably a stretch. <laughs> it's probably not a tour bus. It was rented. You know, it's some sort of RV, but uh, he has a lot of movies. He had a lot of talent. He did some great stuff in Hollywood, sort of chewed him up and spit him out. And now he's... Uh, trying. I, I, my friend uh, Abby was working at the Oriental and she said he was really earnest and you know driven. At this point he has to be right? <laughs> yeah yeah but you know his music I guess it was people showed up to kind of see a train wreck but she was like he really believes in what he's doing and was working so hard so yeah. and then I looked at his IMBD I was like yeah Corey come on. If people can hey, tweet, there, Corey Feldman? will people tweet at me um, at Fake Jake Brown the Corey Feldman movies I need to see <gasps> other outside Start of Stand with by Me? I've already got that. The in Lost the Boys. Okay, Lost Boys Lost is number Boys. one. Uh, or power rankings. If you can just give me your personal power rankings too, that'd be great. The Burbs is so funny, and he's not a huge part of that movie, but he is in it, and it's a funny movie. You never seen The Burbs? I've seen Suburbia. Is that related at all? Is it like a remake? Okay, uh, for more on this and all the stories from the week in weed, visit us online at thecannabis.co. Now, if you're watching this on the Friday it comes out, then you're watching it on the cannabis' own Professor Pat's wedding day. Yeah. Congratulations, Pat and Emily, uh, because of his nuptials. Let's go check in with that weed word wizard, Professor P. Right. You do it, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah, you get it. Mother, a plant usually large that is in a vegetative state from which clones are cut. It is then the mom for all the plants that will eventually be harvested. Losing a mother plant can sometimes be the end of a genetic line, which is really sad, although not as sad as losing your actual mom in most cases. To hear that in a sentence, I lost my sour diesel mom, we should say some words. Thanks, Professor. Our guest this week is a pot public affairs pro. Please join me in welcoming Samantha Walsh to the show. Wow, thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, You're, it's uh, been a while. A returning champion. I know <laughs> so much has happened. Did I win last time? I think I did win whatever the contest was. You for. should. <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome back. I know a lot has happened. We spent a lot of time talking about hemp last time. I know that you've kind of uh, kind of moved outside of specifically hemp, but yeah, a little bit. Um, I want to I want to get kind of an update on where things stand nationally and where we're having some wins in hemp because it's harvest season right now. Harvest Everybody season. In Colorado, they're they're bringing down plants. Um, what's going on? What's the state of the union? Well, Colorado's killing it. Which, yeah. is, which is great news. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think that is in large part to the... Uh, we In Colorado, we've really taken a um, 
a more uh, hands-off approach from the government, like understanding that this is just a regular crop and we should allow farmers and entrepreneurs and business owners to do what they do best, which is grow an industry. And, um, you know, so we've had very smart and sensible regulations in place, nothing too onerous, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's flourished in Colorado. Uh, we're, we have more um, acres of hemp growing in Colorado than we do peaches. Which is uh, ah suck it, Palisade. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Yeah, exactly. Colorado's really known for their peaches uh, more than cantaloupe. Um, so uh, <laughs> we take all those fringe fruits. <laughs> fringe fruits. Uh, hey, hey, cantaloupe is the ubiquitous breakfast fruit. You know. <laughs> yeah, always, always too much cantaloupe. All right, always. Holiday in, Step yeah, up. Yeah, I had to do. Like, <laughs> your what is garden that? cafe. <laughs> like all right. Flavored water fruit. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so I remember the big discussion around, we you know, when hemp production was first getting started is that it was unfortunate. Everyone needed to save all of their seed because it needed to go right back in the ground. It was really hard to import seed. People were getting stopped at the borders. Are we finally to the point where people can make commercial products out of hemp seed, whether it's edible products or whether they're cosmetic products using hemp seed oil, anything like that? Yeah. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Awesome. We're there. Um, uh, there's now, you know, people are working with universities and um, we're getting seed imported. Uh, we have a established uh, seed certification program here in Colorado so people can develop their own genetics, which is super important. I think that, you know, um, part of fostering a good entrepreneurial uh, spirit and, and, and making an industry successful is making sure that people can also own what they create, right? And okay. we're not um, the old Monsanto model. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mom and pop. Well, instead of mom, mom and pop, Monsanto's mom pantos. <laughs> <laughs> it's already happening. It's too late. I did the pun. <laughs> mom pantos <laughs> sounds like what Deb Brown is out there rocking right now. <laughs> so, um, just a little puffy. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Sorry. Oh. oh yeah. She yeah. watches the show too. Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, so, so they're they're starting to develop their own lines of genetics. We're finding because it, one of the big things is making sure that we're below that allowable amount of THC. You're yeah. also looking for different types uh, of hemp cro uh, crops. Yeah, I mean it's important that people are allowed to develop varieties that grow well for um, phytocannabinoids, that grow well for fiber, that are going to grow well for seed and nutritional purposes. Um, you know, and in and, and those fiber varieties, even really exploring what kind of fiber stock is going to be good for creating plastics, what kind of fiber stock is going to be good for hempcrete and herd. Um, so, you know, that's it's where the, there's a lot of R&D going on, and hopefully, um, you know, we can expand upon that. Where are they still hitting hurdles right now? So um, mostly it's just in the economic development stage, and okay. so that tends to be a hurdle, right? When you enter into a new business and you're creating, you, you, you have like infrastructure in place, you know, because a lot of industries, vast majority of them, save this one, um, have benefited from years and years and years of development, and we're kind of behind the eight ball on that. Um, there's still that 0.3% THC seems to be a little bit of a hurdle. Uh, you see some states now, Going a little bit above and beyond that, I think, uh, yeah, North Carolina, what, you know, um, has looked at like one percent. They're talking about a one percent threshold at, um, when they, you know, renew the farm bill this year, renew the the pilot program underneath that. So these are things that have been talked about. You know, sure. Nothing's in stone yet, but you see a lot of that flexibility coming about. Well, and now you see a lot of the market shifted. You have old school hempies that have been out there, and, and I, I, I'm sorry if that's a term that you don't appreciate. <laughs> Apologize, I'm trying to be more PC around my hempies. Um, but they, they were advocating for what, what we're that's talking our, about now. That's our word, you can't right, use right, that right. Word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we've been talking about, you know, fiber um, products, and now you've got CBD that's coming out, and that's really captured a lion's share of the market. It's, uh, there's a lot of money that's coming in around CBD products, and that's mostly being derived from hemp. How has that changed the national conversation, um, changed lobbying efforts, and changed policy work? Well, we've definitely had to shift the conversation and do a lot of education on that part because as far as the regular average lawmaker understands and even consumer, they, because of the Sanjay Gupta special, um, they still really associate CBD with medical marijuana. And I think that because we have this legal distinction of hemp really is just the cannabis plant that has that THC threshold, that there is an ability now to um, sort of capitalize on all of its... Uh, you know, constituents and varieties. And part of that is cannabinoids and cannabidiol is very popular. And I think we're going to start seeing 
um, people doing other extracts, whether it's CBN, CBGs. Sure. I think what's important to realize is that um, this is a nutritional issue and a food issue. This is a medical marijuana or a drug issue. And I know that, and it's important that we maintain that conversation, that this is, um, I, I think you've probably talked about it on your show, like we have an endocannabinoid system. I mean, I got one yeah. today. <laughs> as well, we all have I've one. been told about it. It's my yeah. Halloween you've costume. Been told about it. <laughs> I'm just going to go as myself. Just going to go as yourself. And, uh, you know, we're finding out these cannabinoids are probably addressing a lot of health issues where we've been cannabinoid deficient in our health. <laughs> so, like, just like we, you know, hundreds of years ago discovered that scurvy was a result of vitamin C deficiency, I think we're now seeing that it's possible a lot of these neurological disorders and autoimmune disorders might be a cause of a cannabinoid deficiency or something with endocannabinoid system. Obviously, we sure. don't know what's going on, but I think it's important that we talk about CBD and other cannabinoids that are easily and readily available in hemp, as well as other leafy vegetables, okay. like broccoli. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> the, uh, broccoli. <laughs> sorry. I, I just want to focus on pirate diseases mostly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that we uh, that, that's accessible to people sure. and that we're not relegating just CBD to a pharmaceutical market or that we're not relegating it to just a medical marijuana market. And it, you should be able to get it in Whole Foods. Well, and now it's being normalized. You've got Lucky's Market, which is you know predominantly a national a natural grocer backed by Kroger. Yep. Uh, that are Caring. introducing yeah. CBD products. Um, had some issues. It sounded like with labeling and um, kind of fact statements that were on some of those labels. But they're you know starting that conversation. Do you I, and then Target also had. You know, like a dabble with they CW. Had, they had a have moment. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it felt like a moment. Where where does that happen next? Is it going to be CBD in food products, or is it going to be more of these kind of almost nutraceuticals that we see coming to market? I think it, hopefully it'll be a hybrid of both. I think okay. I would like to think of cannabis. Uh, the cannabinoids as vitamins, right? So you can go to the store and buy your vitamin D enriched milk. You can buy, you know, uh, you can get calcium in anything now. <laughs> uh, I think we have calcium chocolate. That's great for the old ladies. Um, <laughs> Big uh, part of our demo. And so, <laughs> hey there. And, so, and so now I think hopefully that's what we'll see. I think it would, it's good for people to be able to buy it in capsule or mm -hmm. tincture form from a vitamin store. And they should also be able to you know, buy a hemp burger that's, you know, got a little bit of CBD infused in it. Or like coffee, if you had the CBD infused coffee. We talked Steve, Steve Fuse, Fuse yeah. last week. We, I, we drank some. I think, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's really good stuff. And I, I think, yeah, that should be what it is. It's it's sort of like that one of those nutritional food trends that's very similar to antioxidants. Like, remember when antioxidants were in everything? We're mm. putting in our face creams <laughs> and we're eating yeah. it in pomegranates. And it's, you know, that's what it should be you know we shouldn't be restricting access we should be expanding it all right i want to switch gears because uh janae last week was up in boulder talking to boulderites about yeah uh <laughs> how much we found out how much they knew about what was coming up in the session sort of <laughs> sort of we were there and we made some lemonade is what we did um, we what are some of, yeah what are some of the big policy goals um for the cannabis industry coming up? Because I know you work hand in hand with a lot of people. Yeah, I do. Um, I think the biggest thing is going to be taking, for example, hemp, just taking it to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, it's no longer about instituting a pilot program, as you sort of see being piecemealed in, other, piecemealed in other states. It's about how does the state work with the hemp industry now and create economic incentives and drivers and capitalize on this industry, you know, um, in both sides, right? I sure. think that this would be something that would be smart to do in the marijuana industry as well, is to how do we incentivize the industry um, to, you know, be sustainable in the job market and in the market in general, and, you know, how do we incentivize the hemp industry to create factories and manufacturing plants, you know, to start really that creating actual, yeah, creating that infrastructure, which is going to need, I think, a little bit of um, help from the state on that part. Okay, I, we know who who our allies are. We talked to Representative John Singer, Jonathan Singer. One of the uh, best. At the, we love him. Uh, at the Legend of 420 premiere. We have Jared Polis on a federal level, who's now uh, for governor. governor candidate yeah. um, who are the who are the people on the fence that people can reach out to and, and make some impact with I, name names <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I think at a federal level there's definitely a lot of work that can be done um, particularly on the Senate side but it's it's so hard because like hemp is really loved once you really start explaining it mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's in Colorado, it's always been bipartisan and passed unanimously any sort of time that we have a discussion on needed legislation. Um, 
I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's, uh, yeah. everybody's in. It's just They're a matter in. of. I think. I think the education needs to be done at a congressional level. To be honest, okay. it's really important that we work and get the Industrial Hemp Farming Act passed on a federal level. Um, that's going to be important in, in furthering legislation federally, and and so it's going to be working on the senators. On that side, I think Chuck Grassley is, it would be a really good target because that Iowan, yeah, Iowa. well, you know, king of corn, king but of um, corn. <laughs> but he you know still thinks like hemp is a pathway to allow marijuana legalization. So when you've that's seen Iowa's medical marijuana program just <laughs> stagnant for for so long, my my second my sister state, come on guys, uh, <laughs> let's do some work out there. Um, where how can people support hemp locally? Because uh, it feels like you, it almost people know how to go to a dispensary and support their dispensary, support their local cultivator. Um, but it feels like hemp's a little bit more divorced from the market here. I think it's just voting with your pocketbook, as the saying goes, and um, okay. purchasing hemp-based products. So whether it's buying um, Carla Boyd's Hemp Way Hemp Burgers, shout out, plug. <laughs> Carla, <laughs> friend of the show, oh, and delicious and burgers. delicious food. I wanted to be skeptical. I, I'm, you I'm did? Just, I'm it's just so skeptical. Good. It's, about so, it's, oh, it's so delicious. <laughs> I, I was love pleasantly it. surprised. It was, uh, the, the hemp them? cheese, and I won't name names. Um, I'm a little like still testing the waters, but the burgers. Ooh, yeah. I love the hemp cheese. Um, she sells out of her. She's got a little uh, small shop in Evergreen, okay. but you can just order from her online. That's the best way. Um, but like, I think yeah, shopping with your pocketbook. I think going to your local coffee shop and instead of getting almond milk or soy milk, ask them to carry hemp milk. Hemp you know, so delicious. Your, it's so Is good. It? Yeah, I have yeah. not tried it. Oh. It's good. Got kind of a it's all new. I'm just Nutty, listening yeah. like, you don't say. <laughs> well, and it's got a, a rich say. in omega 3s and 6s. Yeah. Or maybe 8s. I mean, it's they so. Throw some eights o- in omega there. Fat. <laughs> it's got a good ratio. It does. <laughs> it has more, um, it's, it has more complete omega proteins than fish does. So it's, it's really good. Yeah, and um, I hear those salmon commercials all the time bragging about their smoked yeah, salmon. Yeah, they got me. I paid $17 for two ounces of smoked <laughs> salmon. They totally got me. Tell me more about this hemp. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, you put the hemp hearts in your yogurt. That's one mm-hmm. of my, my big things. So I think it's just that. It's just like sort of creating that demand for consumers and I think other um, businesses, particularly bigger ones, right? Like we really want the corporations to start including hemp within their business profiles. Like that's what the real winner is going to be, right? So when, you know, GE plastic starts making a hemp plastic, right? A biodegradable and sustainable plastic. When, you know, um, you know, food, like, you know, food manufacturers are creating more hemp food products. I think that's really what's going to drive the market. Yeah. And we look at, we have this kind of huge, what I would consider an ecological disaster when it comes to <laughs> cannabis pro, uh, product packaging here, where everything is single use kind of disposable. Why can't we have some hemp related packaging? I <laughs> would love to have weed sold in hemp plastic. So it um, only makes sense. It's a lofty goal, but we'll get there. She's every part of this buffalo. <laughs> All right, now it's time for pot or not. Oh. Are you right? Okay, so last time you played the pot quiz, but now it's time for America's favorite game show. Uh, it's called Pot or Not. <laughs> you sound very confident in that. <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we have our high scoreboard. Uh, Amy Dawn Hilterbrand is still at the top. Uh, Jim McAlpine, Cliff Gordon right there in second. Not Cola Giovanni in fourth. But hey, let's get you on the board right Lord. now. <laughs> Game is simple. I'm going to read off right. a list of things. And some of them are pot, some of them are not. You simply tell me if you think they are. I play along at home, and if you get them all right, tweet me. I don't know if you're lying. <laughs> all right, number one, are you ready? Yeah. All right, number one, golden soda. Golden soda. Not pot. That is pot, unfortunately. Ah! All right. I play in my head. I got that one wrong. It's uh, right. <laughs> so it's it's Calix Garden. Uh, they did Golden Goat and Grape Soda. It sounds delicious. Okay, yeah. I'm so glad they didn't call it Goat Soda. <laughs> or goat <laughs> Soda. I try Goat Soda. <laughs> you? Well, golden Soda does, I don't know, it's, it sounds so much like Golden Shower. It's, it's I, I don't a know. There's Trump some favorite. weird things going on there, yeah. All right, well, yeah, let's Trump get you back on. I'm showers, skeptical yeah. of anything golden. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> golden beverage, not working. All right. Number two, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Ah, uh, pot. That is yeah. <laughs> one point. Dark Art Nursery, friend of mine, or the show, whatever. It's all the same thing. Uh, it's their combination of fire OG, and then they took uh, Humboldt OG. They combined them two. It's delicious. I would recommend it. Number three, Silver Reef. 
Not pot. That is not pot. Congratulations. <laughs> That's from uh, Twitter user at Mr. Mike Hawkburns. Uh, on Twitter, congratulations, oh. you're our winner Wait, this do week. do Twitter people submit? They, they, you okay. can submit your pot or not. Oh, yeah, you can. Nice. Uh, submit oh, yeah. Hashtag pot or not on Twitter, on Facebook. You can even stalk me on Instagram, as one person has done. <laughs> he just saw he saw a sign that said Silver Reef took a picture and sent it in. I was like, hey. Smart. Okay. All right, so that's two points now. Two out of three. Uh, can we get number four? Cron Jovi. Cron Jovi, is it pot or not? Um, it's such a great pun, but I want to say not pot. It's not pot. <laughs> That's three uh, points. Hit songs include It's question. My Life Sentence. <laughs> and You Give Drugs a Bad Name. <laughs> Cron Jovi, I apologize. All right, number five. Acid dough. Is acid dough pot or not? Pot. It is! <laughs> Four points! Um, that was actually second place at Spanibus this year oh, uh, from nice. Ripper Seeds. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go on. Just on a roll right now. Number six, Chemistry 420. Chemistry 420, pot or not? Not pot. That is not pot! Oh, man! That's too basic. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually the name of the intro chemistry course at Northern Michigan University. Oh, Because nice. they are how, leaning in. Nice. How clever that they called it 420. I know. How they are just, <laughs> no one's ever thought of that. They're crushing it. <laughs> All right, number seven, Obama Kush. Pot. That is pot! I think I smoked that. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that strain. <laughs> I, just, I miss that uh, strain so much. <laughs> All right, number eight, Lint Roller OG. Lint Roller OG? Pot. It's not, I'm not so not sorry. Not. It does sound very I was sticky, though, say right? Not, man, yes. <laughs> um, nope, I just, I was covered in dog hair I'm today. Go and and that's where it came. All right, number nine, <laughs> California Chrome. California Chrome. Pot. That is not, I'm not. sorry. Oh. That was 2014's Kentucky Derby winner, California Chrome. All right, you can tie for third place with number 10, Bubblegum. That's it's, pot. That's definitely pot. Congratulations! <laughs> Seven <laughs> points will get you ah, third place. Third place. I like third place. I like first place better. But. You'll make the board. Yeah. I believe. So oh, uh, forever living in infamy until somebody hits eight <laughs> or so. All right. Where can people find out more uh, about you, about your firm online? Sure. Uh, TetraPublicAffairs.com. That's T-E-T-R-A Public Affairs. And yeah, you we're can really spell affairs for <laughs> affairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm giving your audience some credit. On Thank that. you. Um, and we ju we just do a lot of uh, you know public affairs work, government relations, um, brand management, and reputation management um, for the cannabis industry. TetraPublicAffairs.com. Janae, what do you got going on? Um, on Saturday, October 28th, please come out uh, to Rack House Brewery, hang out with the Pussy Bros for our Halloween-themed birthday party. We have Mark Liebowitz, no, Mike Liebowitz is our headliner. We've got DJ Aaron Stereo spinning. we got a costume contest. $10 ticket buys you your first beer and a bunch of fun things. And, uh, and then I'm going to open for Justine Marino on the 29th at Comedy Works Downtown. Come to that. Justine Machine, she's the best. All right. Um, that's all I got for everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Please rate us, review us. You guys are actually rating and reviewing us now. We, we uh, had like five come in last week. I hope they're all from my mom. Uh, <laughs> don't forget uh, to send us your pot or not. Hashtag pot or not on your favorite social little network platform or send me personal <laughs> mail to the Denver Post. Thanks uh, again to Samantha Walsh for joining us. And on behalf of Producer Vince, my man Don. Woo! Janae Burris and the rest of the Cannabis Show crew. I'm Jake Brown. We'll see you next week. Yeah.